Chum Children Online. I'm so happy that you are with us in this winter wonderland. My name is Miss Katie, and I am so happy that you have joined us for our December videos. We are going to be talking about how it's simply Christmas. It doesn't have to be big and fancy. No assembly required. I am so happy that we get to celebrate the greatest gift we have ever received. Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. So I'm going to ask you, why do we celebrate Christmas? Because it means that Jesus, God's greatest gift, was given to us. And we're going to talk about that all December long. So I hope that you are all bundled up. I'm nice and toasty in my coat and my scarf, surrounded by all this snow. It's beautiful. And I am so happy to tell you the beautiful story about Jesus coming to earth. And I want to start out by celebrating God and celebrating how you see God. We have our Yay God moments. If you remember our Yay God moments from our last videos in November, you'll remember that I look for any kid who wants to tell me how they are seeing God around them. So ask a grown up if you can reach out to us and tell us how you see God. This very special Yay God moment is from our friends Miles and Marnie. They just got a really special gift. A dog! Their dog Linus just joined their family, and they are so happy about that. How awesome is it that they were able to get this special gift? And remember, we're going to talk about our special gift that we get every year, Jesus. And one way we can celebrate those special gifts is through singing and dancing. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I think this song might sound a little familiar to you. So stand up and get ready to dance and to sing our very special song celebrating Jesus' birth. Let's do it. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let her receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven.
had so much fun singing and dancing to our song, Joy to the World, Glory to the King. It is so much fun to celebrate God and the special gift of Jesus. And I can't think of another really special way to celebrate and to learn about how we can celebrate this very special gift than from the Bible itself. Who do we know that's really good at telling us Bible stories and making it really funny and doing some really crazy things? Hmm. Just kidding. Our friends John and Brandon, they are back with the so-and-so show. And we're gonna meet a brand new friend named Kellen, and he's gonna help us learn some more Bible facts too. So I hope you really enjoy this next part with John and Brandon and Kellen. Take it away, guys. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Hey. What are you? <gasps> On the first day of Christmas, nobody gave to me a peppermint candy. Mm. Let's see what else is in this thing. <clears throat> All right. Ooh. Oh, you can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Oh, yes, I can. Mmm. Mmm. Tasty. Okay. What else? Oh, cool. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Can't eat you. Mmm. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> Oh, I get it. <laughs> ah, apple cider. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hmm. Ah! I'm sorry, I, I didn't know anyone was in there. And now for the most important day of all. I wonder what's inside. Oh, hey, Brandon. Merry Christmas. Hey, Brandon. I know you're still out there. Brandon? Christmas. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and we're glad you're hanging out with us as we kick off this festive holiday season. Question for you, John. Hit me. Okay. Thank you. Now go ahead and ask me the question. Okay, what does your family do to kick off the holiday season? Uh, we eat rotten fish. What? Yeah, it's called lutefisk. It's kind of a nasty fish jelly. Yeah, why? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> We've just always done it. Yeah, when your nose hairs start burning with the stink of rotting fish, you know it's Christmas time with that tasty dish. My family watches Christmas movies. Oh, we do that too! It's a Wonderful Life is the perfect movie to start out with. The holidays haven't begun until Clarence gets his way. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey, you've never seen It's a Wonderful Life? It's on my list. Oh. What, what do you want, John? What, what do you want? You, 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 you want the moon? You, you, you just say the word and, I, and I'll throw a lasso around it and, and, and pull it down. <laughs> of course you'd pick a Christmas movie from the 1900s. It's a classic. It's uh -huh. one of the best movies of the, Okay, Shh. fine. And you know what? What Christmas movie would you start with? Ah! The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. La 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 okay. okay, Elf is fine, but it's really more of a kid's movie. What? It is. It, I mean, if you knew real Christmas movies like oh, I do, oh, then you would I know to... Christmas movies more than you, I bet. Oh, well, well, we'll see about that. It's time to play Name That Christmas Movie. <laughs> bah, humbug. That's easy. The Muppet Christmas Carol. 
or any version of A Christmas Carol? <sighs> Anybody want to play a reindeer game like Monopoly? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Not a movie. It was TV. A TV movie? I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. I don't know, something old. White Christmas. Or if you want to get technical, the song originated in the 1942 film Holiday Inn. Also, uh -huh. with Bing Crosby. It burns. <laughs> you look like a deranged Easter Bunny. Christmas story. I'm a prince, but I don't want anyone to know because my evil twin brother who works as a chef at the North Pole might hop on the Christmas train to stop me from finding my true love, if she even has time for love, while balancing her successful newspaper column in New York City and an architecture firm in Los Angeles. <gasps> I only have one and a half hours to meet the girl, fall in love, save the world, and discover the true meaning of Christmas. I have no idea. Really? It's so simple. It's every Hallmark Christmas movie ever. <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. guys oh we're just discussing christmas movies i love christmas movies jingle all the way is the best i'll know if you move because i have the ears of a snake classic i agree hey, so what you got for us today well today we're setting up the entire christmas story it's like a preview of what's to come did you say preview kellen I did. Like a movie preview? Well, we've got your back, Kellen. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Around 700 years before Jesus was born, there was a prophet named Isaiah. Now, a prophet was a person God chose to be his messenger, and they were often given a glimpse of what the future would be like. Here's what Isaiah wrote. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father Who Lives Forever and Prince Who Brings Peace. The child Isaiah wrote about was... Wait, Kellen, no, no, no spoilers. We've, we've got a preview. Something like this, Kellen? Over 2,000 years ago, in the city of Nazareth, a young girl named Mary was visited by an angel. But do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You're going to get pregnant and have a son. You must call him Jesus, and he will be called the Son of the Most High God, and his kingdom will last forever. Mary may have been frightened, but God had a plan. What God says, he will always do. Okay, good, now I can tell you. When Isaiah wrote about the son God was giving us, he was really writing about Jesus. Think about how incredible that is. 700 years before Jesus came, God promised that he would come. Continue. After an emperor's decree and a long journey, Mary and the man she would marry, Joseph, found themselves in the city of Bethlehem. But no one expected what happened next. With no rooms available, Mary gave birth to her baby in a place fit for animals. The baby boy was wrapped in cloths and laid in a manger. Jesus is the Son of God. Isaiah wrote that he would be a ruler, a mighty God, a father, a prince. No one expected the Savior to be born with animals. But God has always done things that are unexpected. You're right about that, Kellen. Thank you. Because God had more surprises in store. God sent an angel to lowly shepherds keeping watch over their sheep. 
I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So buckle your seatbelts because ready or not, here comes Christmas. Wow, way to go guys. Thank you. Doesn't that get you excited about Christmas? For sure. Just think of what Isaiah's words meant for those people years ago. They've been hoping for a savior, so God made them a promise that he would send one. And it was Jesus. Yep, God always keeps his promises. So there's always a reason to have hope. That's a great way to looking at it. Thanks. Now, thank you guys for those previews. I'm thinking of watching some Christmas movies right now. Jingle all the way, here I come. Put that cookie down, now. What was that? As I'm from Jingle All The Way. That was... uh, yeah. Reveal the question. What are you hoping for? What are you hoping for this Christmas, John? Uh, maybe a little more peace and understanding. Ooh, good start. More calm and civil debates and discussions. That would be nice. And then some new headphones. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next week for more Christmas. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And that was the So-and-So Show. It was. My goodness, it was so funny when Brandon bit off the head of that gingerbread cookie. And did you like them in those costumes too? I thought it was hilarious. They did ask a really important question though that I want to hear from you. What is a Christmas tradition that you have? Now, if I was thinking about one of my favorite uh, Christmas traditions with my family, it would be that ever since I was really little, my mom and my dad would have me and my little sister and our dog sit on our steps in our house and they would always take a picture of us in our pajamas. I can't tell you the toys that I got or the food that we ate, but I remember every year looking forward to having that really special picture of me and my sister and our dog. It was something that was really special to me and that's my favorite tradition. So if you have a favorite tradition, I want you to ask a grown up if you can tell us because I would love to hear about it. I'd also love to tell you that we have our friend Caleb who's back to tell us about our Bible story. So let's take it away, Caleb. Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey, I'm Caleb, and this is not a brand new way to deck the halls. Nope. It's my Bible. You might even call it a library. See, each one of the smaller books inside fits together to tell one big story. The story of how God loves us so much that he created us from nothing to be his friends. And when we turned our backs on him, he shaped all of history as one big rescue plan to bring us back. I can't think of a more amazing Christmas gift. In fact, Christmas is a key part of God's plan. It's one of the central moments in the entire Bible. And we're gonna unwrap it in four stories, starting off in the Old Testament book of Isaiah. 
Okay, here, God shares his rescue plan with the prophet Isaiah. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. Who is this child king Isaiah writes about? Well, no one would know for sure until about, get this, 700 years later. Thanks, Caleb. I'm so glad that we get to hear this true Bible story about how God told Isaiah that Jesus was going to be born. The Savior was going to come to the people, and God always keeps his promises. We have hope because God keeps his promises. I want us to remember that as much as we can. So let's say it together. We have hope because God keeps his promises. He loves us and he wants us to know how much he loves us. And that's why he sent his son Jesus, who was going to be born. And we're gonna learn all about that in the coming weeks. Every week this month, we are going to be practicing a new Bible verse. Remember, we have these memory verses so that we can keep the word of God in our brains and in our hearts. So even if we don't have our Bible with us, we can remember how much God loves us. So we have a brand new verse and you're gonna see it on the screen and I'm gonna read it with you. And also, if you wanna follow along with the motions that I do, that would be awesome. If not, that's okay. And we're gonna practice it all month long. All right. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2, 11. It's so great that we have this Bible verse to remember that Jesus came down as a baby and all the amazing things he was going to be able to do when he grew up on this earth and lived just like you and just like me. And another way that we can celebrate Jesus is through prayer. It's our time that we get to just talk to him and not have to worry about anything else or focus on anything else. It's just you and Jesus. So let's take this moment to quiet our hearts and just talk to God, okay? God, I thank you for all the kids who are watching today. God, you are amazing and you are a promise keeper and we can have hope because you keep your promises. You knew that you wanted to send Jesus down as a baby to live with us and live among us. And I'm so thankful we get to celebrate that all Christmas long. Help all the kids who are watching this week for whatever they are working on that we can get excited to celebrate in just a, sh a few short weeks that we have Christmas. It's in your name we pray, amen. Now, Christmas light might look a little different this year and that's okay because we can still celebrate. I have this little lantern here. Now, this lantern has a light inside of it. This light is the light of Jesus that we can shine and share with those around us. And if you want to be able to have one of these lanterns and be able to shine your light for Jesus, I want you to ask a grown-up if you can come to our Fall the Star event. It's gonna happen outdoors and it's gonna be a great way that we get to celebrate Jesus' birth. You're gonna be able to walk the path that others walked that is going to lead directly to Jesus' birth. How special is that? Hopefully when you come, it's not snowing like this. But if it is, bundle up and I cannot wait to see you. We have one more song to do and then that's it. That's our week one of Simply Christmas. So remember, I love you, I miss you, and I cannot wait to continue the Christmas story with you next week. Enjoy our final song. Bye everyone. He came down from heaven up.
Was it?